Hello, and welcome to Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks. I'm Michelle Fitzgerald, aka Fitzy, and I'm an independent advisor for Creative Memory Scrapbooking, and I'm here to help you make your scrapbooks look fabulous. <laughs> All right, um, so today I'm pretty excited because I've been doing some packing because I'm getting ready to go to Minnesota this week and to California after. So it's a big trip. I'm very excited. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to show you something fun. So if you remember, um, I think at the beginning of the month, maybe of May, I did a sketch and showed you a new technique called plus sign design. And so this is going to be my second video in that series. We are going to do another sketch today using the plus sign design. And this will be the one that I do for June using that technique. So I'm just going to go over here to my workspace so we can get started. And voila, there it is. Let me put on a little light too, because hopefully that's better and not worse. <laughs> I'm wor still working on my lighting here. So um, hopefully after vacation, I'm going to get that figured out because I'm not totally happy with it, but we'll see what happens. Now, I'm not trying to be mysterious here. I was just, there was a little bit of a glare. So I, I found that when I put something that isn't too shiny in front of it, there's not, there's no glare. See the glare here? Ew. Okay, so anyway, these are my photos that I'm going to be using today, and they are photos from Grandparents Day at my kids' um, grammar school. So that's my mom, and she came to visit the kids, check out what they did, there I am, um, and just, uh, oh, this is my oldest son, he actually did some singing on the stage that day, so just some cute little pictures. I'm going to put these over here for now and let's talk about what we're going to be working on which is this sketch from yet again this little sketchbook let me find the cover so i can show you what it looks like 110 scrapbooking ideas and sketches um i just sold one of these recently and i do have a couple more left the book is $20, but look at all the different things you can do. Lots of different sketch ideas. And now you can use my little plus sign design to help you get these ideas created and get your photos into your albums. Okay, so the last time we did this, I did a one page spread. So I thought for this time around, we do a two page spread. And then to further complicate it, <laughs> I decided, hey, let's use a laser cut page just to see what it would look like. So we're going to um, play with a lot of things today. Um, I did already go through and kind of look at the page and the measurements. I made my little plus signs and all of that. Um, but we'll do it all again together. And this time, I haven't actually created the page yet, but I have everything I need. So what I'll be using today, I'm going to use navy cardstock as my base. And it's a two-page spread, so I'm going to need two pieces. Then, if we look at our little sketch here. Let me show you one that's not all, got all my notes on it. <laughs> um, we have a circle here that we're going to cut out today. So I'm going to use a piece of decorative paper. And this is from the Our Moments collection. Um, so you want to make sure you like both the front and the back if you're going to play along with me today. Okay, so you need one piece for your circle. And then you're going to need another piece of a decorative paper to use in the background. And I'll show you where this is all going to go. So don't get too nervous. And then I decided to use this laser cut page from the Devotion laser cut paperback. Okay. 
I think these laser cut pages are just beautiful and they're very versatile. And I've decided I am going to create a video um, about these pages. I actually taught a class on this at my, I think it was the NSD event that we had in, um, earlier in the spring. And people loved it and they got so many great ideas. So that might be my next video. We'll see. All right, so then the other thing that you're gonna want, if you're gonna create it just like me, if you're doing something different, that's fine. Um, but I'm gonna be using my jumbo circle pattern. I'm gonna use this template and I'm also gonna need my blue blade and my red blade. So two blades, all right. And then, of course, to create my plus sign, I want my zero centering ruler and my pencil. And it's always a good idea to have a little packet of sticky notes handy because you never know when you're going to need them. Um, I like when there's a lot of different papers involved in a layout. I like to take my sticky notes and just write on the paper. What am I using this for? So for instance, on here, I wrote decorative background. This one I wrote circle and this I wrote base. And it just keeps me focused so I don't forget what I, sometimes you spend so much time and I don't know if anyone else is like this, but if you are, put it in the comments. I'd love to know I'm not the only one. <laughs> But you spend so much time picking out all these papers that will look pretty and coordinate together. And then you forget what you were going to use them for. <laughs> Has anybody done that before? Because I certainly have. All right. So let's move all of this to the side just for a bit. And let's create our plus sign. I'm going to move this. Well, you know what? I'm going to put it over here because I think I can do my plus sign. I did pull out, because I'm not sure if I have enough photos for this layout, I pulled out a couple of mats that I like that I think I might use. Um, so your decorative stuff is definitely um, a little more subjective and you can do it however you like. All right, so we're gonna do this just like we did it last time, except now we're gonna do it across two pages instead of just one which is what we did in the last video. If you haven't seen my first sketch video, I would definitely recommend watching it because I gave a lot of good little tips there for somebody who's never done a sketch before or for somebody who gets easily frustrated with sketches, just to um, give you a few little tips to get you through the tough parts, right? Um, all right, so I'm just trying to find my center point. Now, when you're doing the plus sign, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly centered. So don't get too stressed out over it. But once you find your center point, and then you're going to go over and do this on the second side as well. Uh, so I'm just looking here. And it's right about there. That looks good. And then we'll just come over here to the edge. Oh, it's almost right on. No, it's not. So I'm going to say right about here. And now we're just going to draw our lines. And again, make sure you can draw them as um, light or as dark as you want. But the key is make sure you can see your lines because you want to be able to see what you're doing. All right. So here I have my two plus signs. I hope you guys can see that. All right. Now, after you create your plus sign, the important thing to do is number your quadrants. So here is my quadrant number one, quadrant number two, quadrant number three, and quadrant number four. So now I know for this page, those are my quadrants. And I'm going to do the same thing for this page over here. 
All right. Now, this is just how my brain works. Your brain may work differently. So my suggestion is to always do what works best for you. One thing I want you to remember when using a sketch that you see from Creative Memories, if you have this book, if you have other little sketchbooks, sometimes um, we get these little eight or 10 page um, sketch design pamphlets almost that we give to our clients. Great little sketch ideas in there as well. Um, but always know that these are based on a 12 by 12 page size. And what that does for you and why that makes life a little easier for you is now when you look at each of your quadrants, you know each one of these is a six inch square. Okay, six and six is 12, six and six is 12. This is a 12 by 12 page. And over here, the same thing, all right? When you know that information, now it gives you a little more, um, inf it gives you a little more um, in-depth thought as to where things can go on your page, all right? So let's look at this first side. Let's skip this side for a minute and just look over here. So our six inch mark is down the middle. So this whole first page here on this side is your photos. These black triang uh, triangles, these are rectangles. <laughs> I, I swear I do know my shapes. <laughs> these three rectangles represent photos. So right away, I know that these are most likely four by six photos, okay? Um, and chances are, now this is the six inch mark, and as you see, it goes over a little bit. But if you look over here, there's space left, okay? So they didn't put it up flush against the edge of the page. And there's also, and I don't know if this will show up in the camera, but there's a little border that's gray around these photos. So I know that these photos have been matted. So these are probably more like a four and a quarter inch by six and a quarter inch rectangle when all is said and done. Okay. So we're just going to assume that this whole side is going to be photos and that they're going to come out a little bit onto the other side. Now over here, this white part to me represented my laser cut page. So that's this piece here that we're gonna be dealing with in a few minutes, okay? So we know that that's good, but now we have this paper here. So each different shade of gray and white represents a different paper. So this shade here is another piece of paper that's going to go underneath this uh, laser cut page. So that's gonna be this piece for me. I'm gonna use this wherever this color is on the sketch, okay? Now, wherever you see white here, that's my base page. So that's my navy cardstock. So wherever you see white minus the laser cut page area, that's gonna be navy for me, all right? And that carries true over here as well. All right, so I'm going to be using navy where this white is. So now the only other thing is my circle. And if you see, my circle has two different colors. So that tells me I'm going to flip my paper. So one side is going to be um, this journaling area on the circle. And this other color here is gonna be the other side of this paper. That's why we're using double-sided paper, all right? So now if we move back across to our second part of this two-page spread, we're gonna do the same thing with the circles. So this is gonna cover both circles on both pages. So I can put this away for now. And again, we have that decorative paper that goes underneath my laser cut mat. So this sheet is gonna cover all of that as well. And then over here, we have two more photos, okay? 
Um, and these look like, I'm gonna say they're probably, again, I see that little border. So they're probably four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Uh, at least this one. This one's probably a four and a quarter inch square if I had a guess, all right? Um, and just notice there is some white space here. And of course, that's gonna be my navy cardstock where you see the white, all right? Now, if you look at these little things here, that represents a border, some type of a border strip, and then another strip with it. So when it comes to the decorative stuff, I wait and see till the very end how much decoration I want to put on the page. Sometimes I want to put a lot because maybe the pictures aren't that great. Um, or sometimes the page just looks blank and a little more decorative element will make it look really pretty. Other times I feel like hmm, I, I have a lot on the page already. I don't want it to be too crazy busy. So and again, with sketches, always remember they're just inspiration and a guide. It's, it's not anything that you have to do. You can pick and choose what elements of the sketch you like and do it. Or you can use all of the elements, or you can just pull one little thing out of it and say, oh, I like cutting that circle um, in half. Maybe I'll do that and go a completely different route other than the circle. So whatever you want to get from it, you can, all right? So let's come back over here. And I'm going to start with, let's cut out our circle. Now, take my little sticky off here, because I know this is my circle paper. And I'm just going to line the paper up on the mat. And I'm going to put my circle pattern on my paper. Now, if you have never used the custom cutting system before, this is a great tool to have in your scrapping area. All right. So every custom cutting system pattern is made the same way. We just have different shapes. This is the jumbo circle. The jumbo circle, like all of the other patterns, has two grooves. There's an outside groove here, and there's an inside groove here. All right. Now, if we look at our blades, there are actually three blades. I'm only using two tonight. So there's also a green blade. OK, but tonight we're using the red and the blue. And each blade has these, I'm going to put this up close, these two little pegs, the same color as the casing. So these are blue. The yellow is the blade. All right. And it's the same way on this one. Oh, these show up really well, the, the red pegs. OK, now it's these little pegs that go into these grooves. And that's what keeps your blade going around the circle. Now. Every set of patterns comes with a template. Now, I don't know how well this will show up. Let me see. I'm going to get a piece of white paper because I feel like it will show up better. Yeah, OK. That's good. OK, so these are the lines for the outside groove. So if I were to put my blade in the outside groove, these are the size cuts I would get. And then these are the lines for the inside groove. Now we have three blades, but notice there are four lines at each group. So we have red, we have green, we have blue, but over here we also have black. So the black is where your pattern falls. Let me see if I can get this <laughs> to stay up. So can you see that? I hope this makes sense. So now your pattern is represented on the template by the two black lines. And then the red line represents where the red blade will cut. The green line represents where the green blade will cut. And the blue line represents where the blue blade will cut. All right. Now, I know I need this circle to be big, but not huge. 
So I've already decided I'm going to use the inside groove. That's going to give me a smaller circle. Um, but I also want to create, if we look at the sketch here, I want to create this little ring also. OK, and that's why I have two blades tonight. So I'm going to start with the blue blade. That's going to cut the furthest away from the pattern. All right, so I'm going to put the little pegs into the inside groove. I'm going to put pressure on the blade and I'm going to hold the pattern down. I can switch hands going around the circle with the blade. As long as I don't move the pattern, my circle will be fine. If you don't want your circle to get ruined, just don't move the pattern. You can switch hands with the blade. I'm going to start now, but just keep that pattern still. All right. And take your time. And the circle's moving, so I know I have given it a good thorough cut. And now I'm going to go in and put the red blade into the inside groove. Again, don't move your pattern. Keep that pattern still and go around. And just keep that pattern in the same spot. And now I know I've cut. So once I know everything is cut through, I can lift everything up. He's out of the way. And now I have my circle and my ring. Okay. So I can do it like this, or I can flip it over and do it like that. However, I prefer to have it will work. All right. So there's my circle. Now, if we look at our sketch here, the circle is cut, but it's not cut directly in half. This over here is a lot smaller than this one. So gauging the size, I'm going to say that this is probably about a nine inch circle or so in diameter. And that's just a guesstimate. Um, and we don't have to be exact. That's what's great with sketches. But I think I'm going to cut this at about three inches. So let me pull out my trimmer. And I'm going to keep the ring around the circle. And I'm just going to pull it over so that the highest point is on the three inch line here. And when I like where I have it, I just want to keep it straight as I can. All right, so I just gave it a nice straight cut. So now I have my circles all set and I'm going to put them to the side for a bit till we're ready to come back. Now I'm also looking again at my laser cut paper. So that's this piece right here. And um, I need to cut a good piece. So I'm going to say, now here's my plus sign, right? So we know that this is at the six inch mark approximately. And, you know, there's probably another inch or so after that going on to the other side. So I'm going to just guesstimate. And I think I decided that I was going to try to cut this around four and a half inches um, to give this about seven and a half inches on this side. All right. So let's try. And when I'm cutting at the four and a half inch mark, I am putting the tallest point on the four and a half inch line. So they may not all hit that four and a half inch line, but wherever the peak is, that's where we want. Now, this is kind of a cardboard material. So make sure if you're using one of these, give it a lot of pressure so it cuts right through. So now we have these two pieces cut and I'm gonna put them to the side. 
Now we have our decorative background paper. And it's not too much bigger than my laser cut mat on either side, really. So I'm going to give this a little extra and I'm going to call this, I don't know, I'm going to say around seven and three quarter inches or so. I don't think it's quite eight inches, but again, we're just guessing um, and it doesn't have to be exact science here. After all, we are scrapbooking, so we just have to have some fun with it. And if you're not sure, you could always just kind of gauge it by putting your little laser cut piece and look at that. That will look quite nice. So I think the seven and three quarter inch will do it. Oops. I just got to hold it straight. All right. So now I have all of my papers cut, I believe, and I can start building my page. So let me pull this over to the side here and let me get my base paper out. in my repositionable tape runner. So let me pull, we can start on one side. Now, here's what I'm noticing. This is a little bit bigger than my decorative piece. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut a little bit more off of this. So let's just see how this side goes first. Like I said, it's scrapping, so it's nothing to get too concerned about. And even the best of us make a little goof up every now and then. But the nice thing is you can always fix it. But look at how this is gonna turn out now. Oh, I do like this. Pretty. So let me just cut a little bit more off because it looks like these are about. That's, I'm going to cut maybe. Do. When in doubt, just cut a little bit off because you know what? Um, you can always cut more off, but once you've cut it off, you can't add it back. <laughs> so I'm going to cut a half inch off and see if that'll do the trick. Perfect. Alrighty, so let me move this out of the way. Let me just tack this part down first, and then we'll come over and do this side. So if you, you know, just looking at this, once you are looking at your measurements and just getting your measurements down, um, the rest of it, it just goes really quick. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being, but I probably looked at the sketch before I got on here today for about 10 minutes. So it didn't take me long to decide what I wanted to do. So sketches don't have to be overwhelming. And you know, they don't have to take forever to put together either, which is nice. So line this right up on the side. Okay. 
Let me just think, this is so pretty. What's nice about having it all on your mat, if I want to center my circle a little bit, I can. trickiest part for me is getting these little um, frames on my circle. I don't know why that is such a challenge for me, but, but it is. <laughs> All right. So there's one side and then we can go and build this one. I hope you're liking this. I just think this is such a fun way to use um, laser cut pages and learning about how to use sketches and to not be overwhelmed or afraid of the sketches because they're fun to work with, but you just need to have a plan of attack, I say, <laughs> right? Um, anything's intimidating if you're not quite sure how to do it. That's how I see it. But once you know, and you get a technique down, you won't have any trouble. All right, so we're just gonna go. Let's make sure I'm centering that again. Match. Perfect. And then what we can do over on this here, this page, is we can take some stickers. I feel like this would be a cute one. So if you look here on the sketch, oops, I have it right here. Um, it shows three little borders here. So I'm gonna put a little border strip sticker. And I'll just put my edge off like so. And then I'll put that straight edge back here. This way. So I'm just putting the border strip sticker on and then I'm just cutting it at the edge. And this one's a little too short, so I'm gonna to have to go to my second strip, that's okay. Do one more, just to give that pretty little look. All right, so now we've got those pretty little borders there. And then I'm wondering 
maybe I can just take this little strip. See what this one will look like. We go down. Nope, too busy. Don't like that one. Back in. Let's see how this one would look. Might be too much purple. I don't know. Oh, I kind of like that though. Let's see. Just gives it a pretty little edge. And then we can do this one over on this side as well. So here. And we are just about done. So like I said, this is not too difficult. You just need your little plan of attack and you are good to go. All right, so then I can come and, how pretty is this, right? I hope you guys are liking this. And then I can put my pictures like so. So I could cut these down or I could weave them um, the way they are. That's up for um, up for creative license. Now, the sad thing is I only have one horizontal photo. So I think what I might do Let's put that one here and then do a couple more of these, like so. And then I've got these pretty little mats, so I could even just do something like that as well. So I'm going to play with this a little bit and decide what I want to do. And I think with these two, I like how this page looks. I think with these two, I might map them with like a little bit of like a gray or a white behind them just to have them pop out more on the page. But that's it for this. And then oh, one other thing, if you look here, um, these little flowers, well, that represents um, embellishments. So you can embellish however you want. Now, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for embellishments yet, but I'm gonna play around with it and see what I come up with, all right? But try this at home. If you have created this, post a picture of it in the comments. I would love to see what everybody came up with, all right? So that is it for today. It's a beautiful day here in Massachusetts today, a beautiful sunny day, and I hope you all had a great day. I'm so happy that you spent some time with me today, and I just want to give you a quick reminder, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, and if you like what I did today, please hit the like button. It helps me decide what to teach next. And if you hit the subscribe button and you want to get notified when all my videos come on, please click that little bell icon and then you can personalize it however you want. And stay tuned every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. I am here teaching. <laughs> you have been watching Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks. And I have a Facebook group with my two team members, and it is called FRQ Glitz Girls Scrapbooking Group. We've had a few of you come and join us, so I'm so excited that people are joining us. Um, we're a free community of scrappers. We uh, share, we learn, we get motivation. Um, lots of interaction in that group, lots of great people in that group. Um, would love for more to join in with us. Any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks at gmail.com. And if you like what you saw today and would like some of these products, 
Um, please feel free to visit my website. I would encourage you to do that at www.creativememories.com forward slash user forward slash Michelle Fitz. And um, if you already have an advisor, please visit her website. If you don't have an advisor, or if you're looking for someone new, I would love it if you would visit mine. I also have a growing team. There's about nine of us right now, but we'd love to have more members. Um, if this is something that interests you and you think you'd like to um, jump on board with us, we'd love to have you. So definitely reach out to me. I would love to have a conversation. All right, that is it for now. I will see you next time. And thank you all so much for watching. Have a great week. Bye for now.